In this video we are going to 3D print and build a fully working water jet. It turned out absolutely amazing. But at the same time it's insanely simple to build. If you are interested in printing and building one by your own, stay tuned because I'm going to show you how to do it. This video is sponsored by Hey Gears. Before we even start building and testing some 3D printed water jets, let's first understand what water jets actually are. If you don't know, don't worry, I make it simple and fast. Let's imagine there is a pipe and one end of the pipe is larger and this is called inlet. The other end of the pipe is narrower and it's called outlet. Water flows in this direction. Now what happens with water? There happens actually a lot of things, but like I said, we keep explanations simple and we speak only about the things that we actually need to know to understand water jet. The water velocity rise. Another way to say it, the water will speed up where the pipe is narrower. If you take a plastic bottle without a cork and squeeze it, the water will rush out of course. But if you add the cork and drill there 4 mm hole, also the water will rush out from the bottle. But look at the stream. The stream of the water is what we want from the water jet. Back to the pipe example. If we add inside the pipe an impeller, now something actually moves the water from the inlet to the outlet. And this is what you see on the screen is already a water jet. The real example looks of course a bit different, but the working principle is exactly the same. But why do some boats use water jets and other regular propellers? There is a lot of different reasons, but water jet is mostly used for high speed applications and when high maneuverability is needed. Also the water jets are really efficient in high speed applications. Water jets are mostly used in military and coast guard applications. Speed boats, jets and RC boats like one in my previous video. Most of the water jets have four main components. Housing. This is connected to the boat and most of it is inside the boat. Also this part can be integrated. Then there is impeller which moves the water and is connected to some motor with a shaft. The nozzle that creates the water stream. Inside the nozzle is also a diffuser. And the bucket for steering. This exact water jet is my design and this is as basic as it can be. We are going to build it but also we are going to build something way more advanced. This jet drive has two stages. I found this from RC Life on channel when the Simon was upgrading his electronic surfboard with those exact same water jets. This model is actually paid model. If you are interested, I leave the link down below. I believe we covered most important features of the water jet and we can actually start building. Well, before building, we actually have to 3D print those. In this project, everything is printed with resin. I use Heygear Ultracraft 3 Flex. Heygears is also this video's sponsor. If you are into 3D printing and you are a fan of using resin printers, well, Heygear Ultragraft Reflex is something you should really look into. It provides a one-stop production platform that includes pre-processing software, 3D printer, post-processing machine and high-performance resin to ensure the commercial-grade final result. Industrial-grade mechanical parts along with true UV technology and powerful algorithms for greater precision with high detail sharpness and smoother print surface. After 15 minutes from the box, the machine is ready to go. Before, of course, you have to level the bed. Well, actually, you don't have to. The machine has automatic bed leveling, so it will do it by itself. So just load some resin into the printer and you're good to go. The printer measures the resin level all the time while printing. So you don't need to worry about running low on the resin. If needed, the printer adds resin by itself. Speaking about it, Hagir's also provides high-end resins. For impellers that have to be strong, I'm using Ultra Print Modeling Powder. It's a robust ABS-like material, specially formulated for functioning printing and prototyping. This high-performance material is well suited for printing final products and functional parts, offering long-term structural stability as well as the accuracy. Also, I will use their transparent resin that features 88% transparency. But if you want to print with different colors, oh boy how they solve this problem. Instead of putting every color separately, you will buy a kit that includes five main colors and then you can mix up whatever color you dream of. In this kit, they have included everything that you possibly need for this color mixing process. If you're looking for a resin printer, highly recommend to check Heygear's Ultragraph 3 Flex. For more information about this printer, you find in the link down below. After everything was printed, I cleaned the prints with isopropyl alcohol. This is also pretty dope how Heygear solved this problem. Like I'm not a fan of printing with resin because the messy boss processing. This is a huge step in right direction. After curing the models, they look absolutely beautiful. 
Right now, the transparent parts are not as transparent as I want them to be. To make them as transparent as possible, there are multiple ways actually to do it. But for me, wet sanding and clear coating have always worked. So I took some 500 grit sandpaper and started sanding. You might have seen videos on YouTube where they start sanding from 240 grit up to 5000 grit and then they polish the parts with some paste. This is different technique and I am not going to use this today. I am sanding the part lightly only with 500 grit sandpaper and then clear coat this. By the way, you can even skip the sanding and just use some clear coat. But in my experience, you always get better result if you sand the part first. Sometimes the model has some small details and you just cannot sand at all. Then use only clear coat, it's fine. Anyway, I did all I just described and the result is front of you. I am happy with it. Still, it's not clear as glass, but I believe it's as close as I can get. Also, I painted the impellers to red. Then we can see them better inside the water jet. If you are wondering why I painted and didn't mix up my own red resin, this is because I wanted to use the tough resin for the impellers. By the way, I didn't sand those parts. The surface finish is that good. Now when the printing, painting and clear coating are finally done, we can start assembling the water jets. I started with my own design because it makes a great example how simple water jets actually are. I took a 150mm shaft, sanded one side flat and connected the impeller to it. Then I took one 8mm bearing, press fitted this into the bearing place, pushed the shaft through it and installed the lead with 4 M4 bolts. And it's done, as simple as that. The second one what we are going to build is a bit more complicated, mostly because it has two stages. Be noted this is a paid model and this is how I will build this is actually not the correct way to do it. Mainly because I just don't have right size bolts and I could not use threaded inserts because the model is printed with resin. So that's why I made some changes to the model and built this my way. So I started by epoxy gluing 4 M5 threaded rods to the housing. Of course it's not meant to be like this but it works. I mean those threaded rods stay there really well, they won't go nowhere. I also tried to align them correctly, but here is where I run into some trouble. I did my best to get them perfectly straight and parallel to each other, but they didn't do well enough or those rods have some bent into it which is completely possible. So I really tried my best to get them in there, but I didn't manage to do it. After I tried my best, I didn't get those first stages away from there. Again I tried really hard and it was just impossible, so I broke the model on purpose and printed a new one with a bit larger hole on the sides. I wet sanded and painted this one also and I feel I did even better job with this one. So we can move on to the next things. To continue I also need one 220mm shaft. I filed one side flat till the impeller fits to the shaft nicely and tightly. Next I installed one 8mm bearing. This held in place with this little thing. This screws in there with M5 bolt if I remember correctly. Well I don't know because I don't have this anyway. So I just use some epoxy glue again. Now one o-ring has to be installed in the hole where the shaft comes out. I mean I have shitload of o-rings and I didn't find the match. The one that matched with inner diameter didn't match with outer diameter and other way around. I even have more o-rings but I just didn't find the perfect fit. I ended up using one that is kinda loosely there, maybe it helps something but probably not. Now finally we can put the rest of the water jet together. First I installed the shaft and the first stage impeller. Then the first stage housing that fits there now perfectly by the way. Then the second impeller, this impeller inner lock itself to the first impeller. By the way the motor will drive the shaft, shaft is connected to the second impeller and second impeller drives the first impeller. It works like this. I don't know how important this information is but it works that way. Then comes second stage or actually we can call this part a nozzle. And then I use my own design spacers and the M5 nuts. And the water jet is done. This one was a bit more complicated, but actually still pretty simple. But now the real question, will it work? I don't see any reason why it shouldn't, but let's find out. I tried to spin the water jet with my power drill. It worked, but RPM is obviously too low. So I decided to use my 4 motor gearbox. This has output speed around 6000 RPMs. I 3D printed a mount and two gears. By the way, if you are wondering why I didn't connect the shafts directly. Good question, but I wanted to keep the gearbox above the water level. This gearbox is not really submersible. After working a bit with the mount, I was ready to go again. This small plastic box, well yeah I am going to use this for now. But we also go to the lake. I am doing this test to see is everything working with the gearbox. Or I have to do some changes again. So let's see.
Not bad, it's working, but of course the plastic box is a bit too small. Actually, I had some problems with the gears. The mount bent and the gears were not connected. But I fixed this and now we can test this in a bit bigger environment. This watershed is working flawlessly. I'm really happy how everything turned out. I also really love the transparent housing. It was so cool to see how the water moving inside there. Again big thanks to Heygears for sending me their absolutely amazing Ultra Graft Reflex and those high quality resins. They made this all possible. By the way if you're thinking this watershed doesn't have enough power or something, well this is really easy to fix by using some stronger motor. My 4 motor gearbox has maximum of 6000 RPMs. If you used there some stronger motor with higher RPM, the stream of the water would be way greater. I just don't have something better than my 4 motor gearbox. What I'm trying to say, this watershed is capable of doing more, and I didn't use the full potential of it. But big thanks for watching and I hope you are satisfied. Well I am for sure. If you like this video really hard, then my channel is all about similar content like this video. Also big thanks to everyone who is keeping this channel running by supporting me by Patreon or YouTube membership or super likes. Again big thanks for watching and see you guys really soon with the next project video. Bye.